Okay, welcome back. Uh, this will be episode three. I can't remember where we left off, so we're going to go ahead and jump in and try to figure out what we're going to... We're going to play real quick just to see where we were at. All right, so we had our guide. I think we have behavior of it going up. Uh, did we have it doing game over? Let's see. I think we did. It has been a while. Hey, that might be a problem. Uh, well, we're going to end up... You notice right now there's a problem of I can launch two balls in the time it takes those to move up. Uh... That's a problem that we're going to have to fix eventually anyway, because we're going to want a bunch of different stuff to happen. Okay. Okay, we do have the game work. Alright, so... Our GM... Oh, uh, yeah, I wanted to do a little bit of house cleaning real quick, uh, or whatever you want to call it. Um... Oh, we should probably back out of Steam. Exit Steam. There we go. All right. Um. So yeah, I, I uh made the video and actually put it up on the uh the game salad forums. Uh, I want to say thank you so much to everyone who's helping out with it. Uh, a lot of really, really nice encouragement and everything like that. And also a big thank you to Icebox. Um, Icebox was pointing out that uh, I'm tracking the mouse position X and mouse position Y when I really don't need to, at least not yet. Um, because that's already a variable that's being tracked. Uh, I think, I can't remember why I got it in my head that I needed to do that. I think it's probably because later on in the game I'm going to have to, uh, track it by touches, but I, I'm, I'm not 100% sure why I did that, but anyway. Um, I'm going to try and slow things down a little bit as well. So anyway, with that out of the way, I apologize for <laughs> taking a while to get started. So we're going to go and get started. Okay, so let's, let's talk about that issue that we were seeing. Uh, Ball fall and ball landed. Let's increase that timer. Because I think the guys move up. Doop 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 doop. Uh get hit. Move up. How long do you guys move up for? A second. Alright. Um that should be okay. Uh I wonder if I should let's try it out real quick. I should just add like 1.1 1 .1 or something like that, but it should probably be okay. Um, that still doesn't look right. I'm still able to launch while they're moving up. I shouldn't be able to do that. Ball has landed. Change ball landed after false. I'm sure I've got some kind of time math that I'm not doing right. I don't... <sighs> Yay, the ugly part of the game development already, right off the bat. Alright, I'm going to pause try to figure this out, and then I will come back. One problem I definitely did notice is uh, I had this set to every instead of after, and I think I need my run to completion. That is probably the problem. Let's test it out and make sure. No, it is not the problem. All right, pausing again to try and figure this out. All right, so I'm wanting to investigate uh, what the issue is. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to... I wanted to show this real quick <clears throat> Well, before I continue my investigation. Uh, so I can't get to the bottom barrier. I think the problem is in the bottom barrier, but I can't get to it. I can't see it. There's no way to zoom this out or anything like that. So what's the best way to try and find this actor uh, that is not within view? Uh, you'll want to go over here to the Layers tab, and this will be uh, Collapsed, uh, the Background tab, and then you'll just want to find the thing you're looking for, which is Bottom Barrier, which doesn't have what I'm looking for in it. But anyway, um, I'm probably going to have to take the behavior that's on the ball that is flagging, hey, change this uh, attribute to true, the ball fallen attribute to true, um, and put it on the bottom barrier. Um, because the ball deletes, and I think that might be processing before it's actually changing, before it's actually changing it. Um, I don't know. We'll, to, we'll check it out and find out, but I did want to show you guys the, the layer thing real quick, and uh, we're back. 
All right, I'm not 100% certain, but I think I may have found out the issue. Uh, in our ball behavior, whenever we have landed at the bottom, we have it immediately saying ball active false, which if I'm, if, let me check real quick, but I think that's what our cannon is looking for in order to actually spawn the ball. Uh, ball active, okay, so that's the problem, is whenever the ball is hitting the bottom, it's immediately saying, all right, you can launch another ball um, because of the, it's because of this, act, this uh, attribute right here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm actually just going to delete it from the ball. Um, and then, let's see, GM. That, that's GM, that's the debug text. GM. Ball has landed. And we're going to say change attribute in here. Change attribute. Game. Ball active. To false. Now let's give it a shot. Sweet. I could probably <laughs> shorten that timer now since I had it at like two seconds. Uh, one second's probably fine. Um, I'll probably have to tweak that later. Just because I'm probably going to have some kind of processing going on like right there. Uh, you know, maybe like a little bar going up for score or something along those lines. But all right. So it'll be pretty boring if we only had four pegs. Uh, and like I said, I want this to be somewhat of a procedurally generated game kind of thing. Um, but it's going to be super duper simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create like a peg spawner. Um, and there's already going to be a problem with that. That's not going to happen every single time that I already know of a bug. Like cause I've made this type of game before just in my free time. Uh, you know, just messing around trying to learn the system. Uh, but it was a really long time ago. Uh, but I remember running into a bug and I remember, I think I remember how to fix it, but I've already got it in my head, but we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. All right. So, uh, let's go ahead and say, call this a ball spawner. All right. So we're going to listen for if, what should we listen for? Probably ball landed or ball active. No, ball active, because if we put ball active, it'll spawn some right off the bat. Like, as soon as you load in the game. Well, I guess that wouldn't be so terrible. The only thing I don't know how to do is to keep... Well, no, I could do that. Keep the pegs from spawning on top of each other. What I could do is, if a peg is overlapping with, you know, a peg, it just deletes itself. But then that would delete both. Um... I'm sure there's someone on the forums that would know how to fill, fix it. We're just going to move forward at, as is. Uh, I'll, I'll try and do some research on that later. Um, okay, so the actual spawning. Um, we're going to say... When the ball hits... When the ball is falling. Let's say you go when the ball is falling. Game. Ball landed is true. Spawn actor Sorry, I'm trying to think of what how I'm gonna escalate because I can't just have it spawning one actor every time the ball lands. Maybe every time the ball lands it sort of increments a a, a, a variable and like every like five times it spawns another spawner and then it can and then it can have two coming up um five is probably too high uh i would say probably huh every time or every two let's go with every two that seems like a good place to start all right so we're going to make an integer for that I'm sure, again i'm not an expert at game salad so i'm sure a lot of people are upset with how I'm doing this, um, but this is the way it's going to go. Difficulty increase. No, I can't do it there. Let's do it on the actor itself, false spawner. And this will be the first time we've used a uh, an integer on an actor instead of the game. Um, difficulty Okay. Um, all right. So people may ask, why would you want to do uh, 
a variable on an actor instead of variable, you know, a global variable. Um, for a number of reasons, but usually the most common uh, excuse I get for it is enemy health. So, like, say, and we will end up probably making an enemy that takes more than one hit, but... Like, say, if these each had to be hit five times before they would die, uh, if you made it a global variable, you'd put, you'd put the behavior in here to say, all right, uh, when you get hit, look at, the, you know, a health variable and subtract one, um, or subtract however many you want, you want it to be. Um, and what we would do... Oh, yeah, never, sorry, I got lost in thought there. Uh, if When it got hit, it would subtract one. But if it was a global variable, it would subtract it for, for that globally. So whenever this one hit zero, it would actually kill all of these. So, like, whenever this one gets hit by the ball, it would subtract one from every single one of these. So, But if it, you're tracking an actor variable, uh, then it would be uh, to this particular instance of this actor. Uh, it would hit this one and subtract one from that actor, not all of them. Um, that's usually the most understandable example I give in that kind of situation. Okay, uh, now that that incredibly long-winded thing is out of the way, let's go ahead and try to figure out where the hell I was. Oh yeah, I was doing the spawner. Ball spawner. Alright, um... Okay, ball has landed. Let's let's go ahead and change our attribute. Oop, that's the wrong area. Uh, you're going to spawn the peg in front of actor is fine. Relative to actor is fine. The direction is fine. Uh, now, I kind of want to randomize the position. I don't want it to be in the same place all the time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, open up the little expression editor. i go to functions and random. There we go. And this will be in pixels. So you want it to be so from the floor to the ceiling. Um, how wide do I want to? How wide is my scene? Hang on, I'm gonna find that out. Hmm. Find out my scene. Da -da 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 -da. Scene, initial scene. What size are you, scene? You are 768 pixels wide. Yay, Apple and their weird ass pixel counts. Um, I'm just gonna say 700. Uh, um. All right, and you, all right, function, random, I'm sorry, I'm so scatterbrain tonight. Uh, let's say zero, oh well, no, not zero, uh, 760. Uh, all right, so let's just say, I don't want to go to zero because that'll, that'll put it like all the way to the edge. Like how many end do I want it to go? Probably about. I don't know, 10% maybe? Does that sound good to you guys? I know you can't answer, but there you go. Uh, let's go with that. Yeah, let's let's say, let's just say 70. Uh, and then we'll go 700. All right. Uh, spawn pegs. Spawn pegs. All right. And we also want to change the attribute. Change attribute. Boop, 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 nope, game. Ball spawner. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Did I not make it? Hang on. I guess I didn't. Alright. Um. Oh, difficulty. There it is. I'm blind, I guess. Uh, da -da 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 difficulty. There it is. Two. Uh, ball spawner. Difficulty. Plus uno. Oop, not plus 21. Good lord. Alright. There we go. And increase difficulty. Alright. Now, we should test this out probably. Spawn pegs. Let's test it out. Now we need to make sure we drag one into the scene. Um... Yeah, it doesn't really matter where it is, to be honest, because it's using, in its behavior, it's not using according to act, oh, it is using according to actor. How about relative to C? Nope, here it is. I don't care what this one is. Zero is fine. Um, but let's see. Relative to scene. There we go. All right. Let's save. 
and play. Oh, it's Y. I didn't put its Y in. Huh, <laughs> derp. Alright, uh, derp, derp, derp. How high up do we want to go? What was this size again? Where are you at? Like, I want to, I want to put it close to where you are. Where are you at? You are <coughs> at 68. Let's call it a 70. Because I'm scientific. Alright. I like to be exact. Surgical precision. Did it spawn one? Yeah, it did. Heck yeah. It's hard to tell sometimes. Yeah, it spawns one every time it falls. Alright. I do need, still need to set up behavior to make sure that they don't spawn on top of each other. Because that's... This is a little close for my taste. Okay. We're beginning to have the beginnings of a game here. How about that? Um, I'm sure there's some really simple, simple script that I'll probably have to ask the forums about that just says, hey, I'm inside this other thing. Move apart. So let, give me just a second. I'll be back in a minute. All right. Terribly sorry about that. I had to take a phone call. Uh, but anyway, as I was saying before, there's probably some kind of behavior or simple script that says, hey, I'm inside this other actor. Have us move apart. But I don't know what it is. I just took the opportunity to get some delicious iced tea. Uh, excuse me. And my hat. Because being bald sucks. But anyway, moving on. Um, Okie dokie. Where were we? We were at the, we had the spawner. That's right. Um, now I want to set up a behavior that will spawn more spawners. So what I'm going to do is because I've got that difficulty ticking up by one. And let's say... I don't know if there's a way to check for like if if even or if odd. So I'm actually going to do something else. I'm actually going to go a different way. Uh, spawn, spawner. Since I was going to go with just every two. Um, man, every one for new peg sounds hard. I may, may change that later. Like a, a peg every time the ball falls, that sounds really difficult. Uh, we'll, we'll test that out and see how it goes later. Anyway, um, spawn spawner, uh, da -da -da -da. we want to see if a rule, or attribute, if ball spawner difficulty is equal or greater than, I don't know why it would be greater than, but equal or greater than, let's go with four, I don't, I'm really sheepish about the difficulty now. Uh, alright, so what I want you to do, I want you, want you to spawn an actor, and that actor is going to be, where are you at? Where are you at, ball spawner? There you are. All right. I'll just spawn right on top of yourself for now. We may have to change that later. And then what we're going to do is we're going to change, oops, you do, change attribute, game spawner, difficulty to zero. See, we don't have to do the plus one here because we actually want to change it to zero. Uh, so we're not, like, subtracting till it reaches zero, so we wouldn't do set difficulty minus anything. Um, we would just say zero. Uh, so we're just going to zero it out. Let's see if we end up having more ball, uh, more peg spawn. So right now we should have one spawn every time it lands. Great shot, Dan. All right. Boop. Oh, God. I'm terrible. One spawn, one spawn. One spawned. Two spawned. All right, we're good. Two spawned. All right, I think I think it's working. Hopefully that is something that will uh, sort of exponentially grow the game. So this next time it should spawn three. All right, I think we're in business. Doop. Doop. Um... One of the things I am kind of bummed about is using this procedural kind of generation. It's going to be... And with Game Salad in general, like, last time I tried to make one of these types of games, like, one of the fun parts about Peggle is, is the big ramps. You know, being able to hit an angle just perfectly and it ramps around a circle or, you know, it hits a big ramp and it's really cool. I don't know that I can really achieve that very well in Game Salad. I would have to go uh, make a bunch of custom... Um, Make a bunch of custom behavior, or a custom collision, I mean. 
and having to do that for a series of blocks might not be the easiest thing to do. Uh, we can, I, I'll think about that some other time and we'll get it figured out, but I kind of want to play this until I die. See how it goes, because it shouldn't be. Ah, here's the bug I was talking about. Your ball gets trapped. Um, now we're soft crashed. And soft crashed it basically means that, like, the, the system, like, the code itself is still doing exactly what it needs to do. The game is actually still running, um, but it has reached an unplayable state. Hard crash is like, say, hey, the whole thing just shut down. It, it, something went wrong. The code threw up all over itself. All that kind of stuff. Um, but in this case, uh, this is called soft crash because the code is still running, doing exactly what I told it to do. Um, but it has reached an unplayable state. Okay, so let's go ahead and fix that. That's a more complex fix. Let me, give me a second. I'm going to pause it and think about the best way to go about this. I, what I think I'm going to have, so I know I'm going to have to make, either make or use an existing attribute. Uh, I'm going to have to track the ball speed. And if the ball speed is under a certain number for X amount of time, probably like two or three seconds, um, then trigger all of those, uh, the hit blocks to, to destroy. Uh, and, you know, because the score's been in, at that point the score's been added and everything like that, we're just going to have to destroy them. But I don't want, I can't use the same, I can't use the same attribute that I'm using for when the ball lands, because then I could shoot into the ball right away. Or, you know, that whole thing starts processing as if the ball had landed. So I'm probably going to have to make another attribute on the pegs. That's called like ball stuck or something like that. And then, uh, and then trigger that. Or, you know, listen for it. Okay, let's, let's try setting that up real quick. I won't take a break. Let's say bull ball stuck. It is false for now. Let's look at the GM. Doop doop. Let's collapse all this crap. Um, alright. Cool. I need to make another attribute to track the ball speed. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let's go with that. <laughs> um, ball speed. Alright. Um, and we're gonna have to have the ball constrain that. Ball. What are you gonna do, ball? Uh, collapse, 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 collapse. All right, constrain attribute. But the thing is, it its speed is marked through X and Y, so I might need ball speed X and ball speed Y as two different attributes. But I'm really only care about Y. Yeah, let's just do it with Y for now. Ball speed two attributes ball is it under motion physics? I know there's a way like to track its current speed, but I don't remember velocity, angular velocity. Okay. Uh I'm going to track that see what it says. We're going to dump that. Film game ball speed. Let's see what you say. Should be zero starting off. All right, now I launch. That. That's not right. I have clearly done something horribly wrong. Up here. You know, I could probably put a display text on it. Big ass thing that says GM on it. Display text. I R G M. Big red text. Fear me. Come to front.
Why are you no display? To, oh, because I actually have to play it to do it. So that doesn't do me any good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really tired, I guess. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, so we were trying to check that velocity. Why is it not angular motion or angular velocity? Set game ball speed angular velocity. Maybe it needs to be a float. No. Can't imagine it needs to be a float. All right, I'm going to pause for a minute and see if I can't figure this out, and then I'll come back. Well, that is horribly frustrating. Um, what happened is I paused my uh, my software and then moved it to another screen to get it out of the way so I can try and work on it, and it told it to record again, and it recorded the wrong screen. So what we're going to have to do <clears throat> is I'll try and step through what I was working on. I apologize if I've missed anything. I'm so sorry. Uh, really, really sucks. Um, so we were working on the ball. I think we had tracked... We were constraining this attribute to its uh, angular velocity. All right, so what we're going to do from there is we're going to go ahead and say, and uh, what I had done actually is I uh, created the ball stuck variable, which I don't think I need that the more I think about it. I think I just need to track the ball speed, and that's it. The ball stuck, I can't imagine I'm going to need that that second variable because I can track the ball since it's a global variable I can track the ball speed on another actor so I'm actually just going to kind of delete this you know we're going to go ahead and go to our peg dead and uh and so shoot I was going to put it right here and then just say hey if, you know the ball speed is under this amount uh delete yourself but I want to include a timer for that to be true, um, because if the ball is ultimately going to be lower than the threshold that I sit or set um, for, you know, a quarter of a second or like a, a fraction of a second, and uh, I don't want this to happen during that. I want this to only happen if that is true. You know, like if it's been that way for like a second or two, you know, for a while. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and but no rule attribute if game ball speed is less than let's say three even shot that was a wonderful noise it just made you're welcome um yeah ball stuck all right and we're gonna put a timer on it okay so timer is gonna be and we want to make sure we don't use the run to completion because if we left that, it would say at any point if the attribute is below that, we're going to start this countdown and it's nothing can stop it. If we have this check, nothing will be able to stop it. Um, and uh, and we don't want that. We want it to, we want it like if the ball were to get loose after, you know, during the three seconds that we're allowing, that we don't run this function. All right, I think that's should. Do it. Um, one thing I had created is this little uh, little cup here to try and get the ball in, to try and get it stuck. Uh, fingers crossed. I'm not too confident about this. We're gonna give it a shot though. Burp, burp. Oh, that's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted to do. We're gonna go and reach out. <laughs> ah, there we go. That should do it. It worked on the first try. I don't think I've, I've been, oh, I'm so happy. So happy. Oh, okay, good. That's awesome. That's, mmm. Oh, that never happens. I'm sure it's not fixed. <laughs> That's how little confident I had confidence I have in that. Like, I am sure. <laughs> this is, that can't be that easy. There's no possible way that worked out that well. <laughs> <laughs> all right we're gonna go play naturally for a little bit i'm kind of trust that at all oh goodness uh where's the 75 there it is all right i'm gonna shoot all right cool let's get some more pegs up in here so we can get this ball stuck i don't know how i like those spawning that part over we may have to bolt pull that in a little bit that's a lot of that's real close to that wall 
it's not a huge deal. And uh, I'm not sure if I talked about this before the, the software snafu or not, but um, one of the fun things about Peggle is the ramps and stuff, uh, and the special special things, and ramps, ramps going to be, that seemed like a lot that just spawned. Anyway, ramps are going to take special collision and stuff like that, and uh, yeah, it can get kind of ugly. What, that seems like an excessive amount of spawning. I don't think that's right. That seems like too many. I'm as shocked as you are that this is working. And, this, and when you go with that many, you're going to run into that problem where the ball gets stuck like every friggin' time. And I, need, I need, think I need to assist some randomness to the Y value as well. Because uh, we're just getting lines of things. And eventually it will just be a line of things. And I'll never have to deal with it. Uh, so yeah, that's a problem. Let's go ahead and fix that real quick. I don't like that. Ball spawner. We're going to give you some randomness to your Y position. Dump that. Function. Random. It's relative to scene. Actually, I kind of want to make this relative to the actor just to make things a little oh no I can't really get relative to the actor because I kind of wish I could make the x and y independent on which one is actor which one is seen but that's okay um all right so where are we at we're at the 70 y position wait 70 and 70 I really said that worked out um okay so we're gonna go into random uh, where's it that again? There it is. And, um, let's say, ow, um, forty-five and eighty. Because why not? All right, let's see if we get a little more. Oops, where are you at? I need to add at least. A couple of pegs to start off with. I'm gonna do that real fast. I don't have. I can't have an empty screen, and then like, oh, I just need to shoot the ball now. Right, and we'll put another one over here. So two, I think, is a good start. Let's do that. Uh, three fifty-five, three fifty-five, Yeah, actually, I think we need to go more. I'm not trying to be exact or anything, but <clears throat> something loosely resembling symmetry. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ah, I got gotcha. you. All right, I am still concerned that we're going to have just a line of pegs at some point. I'll try and figure out the best way to design around that. Boop. Boop. Oh, yeah, twofer. I could probably set up some long shot um, behavior. That wouldn't be too hard. Basically, you're just going to say, I've hit a peg. Start a timer. If I hit another peg over this, like, I'd probably put a, a variable on the ball. Um, and then after X amount of seconds of not hitting another peg, change an attribute to like, hey, long shot, true, and then hits another peg, and then boom, hey, long shot, good job, and then set long shot, false. Anyway, I think that's probably going to be it for uh, tonight. Uh, we're probably going to be moving on to art soon, just some placeholder art. Uh, I'm always a big believer that you need to get the prototype done first. And we're not we're nowhere near done with the fully functioning you know thing of this game, uh, but I do also believe that getting some art in the game will can really help sort of guide the vision of the game and the design. Um, and I have some some ideas for where I want to go with the art on this, and I'll go and say it now. And I'm sure I'll say it next episode too. I'm not an artist. <laughs> I'm probably the furthest thing from an artist you'll ever ever see. Uh, but you know, I, it's self learned and. 
And uh, it's just the way, it's probably better ways to do it, but it's the way I'm going to do it. And uh, yeah, we'll have to see what's going on. I don't, I'm not crazy about this. I don't like this. I'm going to, I'm going to figure out a way around this. I don't, I don't like this big droves. I feel like I'm spawning too many. Too many too fast. Too many all together. That's just a, that's just too many. So, all right, we'll, we'll figure that out later. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or need any help with anything or have any requests, please let me know, and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks. Oh, and real quick, while I'm still here, uh, while I remember, uh, please, uh, I think I'm trying to do a Patreon thing. I'm not expecting too much out of it, but if you have a couple bucks laying around and you feel like you know you might want to contribute to help make these videos a little maybe a little more high production value or you know even just uh make them you know like somewhat worth my time i guess uh that's not why i do it the reason i do it is because i want to teach people but uh anyway thank you so much for watching uh if you if you do feel like being a patron uh i'll put a link somewhere around here i don't in this area like a couple gotcha controllers anyway uh thanks bye